Hi guys, are you guys ready for another Lunch and Learn? Today we are going to be learning about birds and their feathers. Researchers believe that there's over nine to 10,000 species of birds and one thing that all birds have in common is all birds have feathers. Now the reason they have feathers are for amazing adaptations. Adaptations are things that help the animal to survive and birds that have feathers have adaptations for different types of colors, adaptations to help them survive, and that's one thing that we're gonna be talking about, how each of those feathers have unique adaptations to help them survive each and every day. Birds' feathers come in all sizes, shapes, colors, and they all look and feel totally different for which to help them survive. Birds' feathers are used to keep them dry and waterproof just like our ducks and swans at the Akron Zoo. Feathers also keep the birds nice and warm. If you guys go outside on a cold winter day, you might still see birds and they're not cold because of those feathers. Feathers are also used for camouflage, just like hawks and penguins have camouflage, which we call countershading, which is they have white bellies and black backs, which help them to survive from killer whales or to find their food to eat. Some feathers are actually used for mate attraction, just like our ring neck pheasants that we have here at the Akron Zoo. And other feathers are actually silent in flight to capture their prey. So speaking of birds, you guys are gonna meet an awesome bird with some awesome coloration. And her name is Chi Chi the Yellow Naped Amazon. Hi everybody, this is Chi Chi. She is our yellow-naped Amazon parrot and she would come from Central and South America down in the rainforest. Now as Todd was talking about with feathers, Chi Chi is a bird so she is covered in those gorgeous green feathers that she's got and she uses them to help her in three different ways. One of the things Chi Chi uses her feathers for is camouflage. So she's got those beautiful green feathers that help her to camouflage really well up into the trees in the rainforest where she would live. She does have a little bit of blue and red. You can see on the edges of her wings and kind of on her tail a little bit there and those help her to blend in with all of the flowers and the berries and things like that that grow in the rainforest as well. Her feathers also help her to fly because living in the rainforest she does need to be able to fly around from tree to tree in order to find her food that she likes to eat and to avoid any predators that may decide they want to try to eat her. And the third thing her feathers help her to do is to stay dry. Being a bird that lives in the rainforest, there's a lot of water out there, so she needs those rain feathers to keep her nice and dry and waterproof. So when it rains, the water will actually hit Chi Chi's feathers, it'll ball up like the water on a freshly waxed car, and it'll beat up and just run right down off of her tail, and her feathers stay perfectly dry. And that is helpful because I can't imagine that it would be very easy to fly with a bunch of soggy feathers. So those are some of the things that her feathers help her to do to survive. Now just a couple little fun facts about Chi Chi since we did talk about her flying around in order to find her food. She does like to eat a few different things. And that beak is the biggest clue to what she likes to eat. So she can use that beak to crack open the shells of nuts in order to get to the nice meat on the inside. She also will eat fruits, berries, and leaves. She's an herbivore and just likes to eat her plant materials. So that is one of her fun facts. The other neat one has to do with her toes there. If you notice, she's got four toes total. She's got two in the front and two in the back, and that helps her to grab a hold of those perches like the branches in the trees or my finger, as you can kind of see here, and helps her to sit nice and steady. Kind of different than us, all of our toes point forward, and hers being split like that means that she can hang out in the trees a lot longer than we could if we tried to climb up in a tree barefoot and hold on with just our toes. So she is built like that in order to survive really, really well in the rainforest. All right, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed getting to meet Chi Chi. And if you stay tuned for just a few minutes longer, I have Sarah that's going to be coming to you with a very cool bird-related craft. Hi, Sarah, and I am back to show you some fun activities you can play with your children and a couple of crafts also to go along with our theme today, which was birds. If you look behind me, we have our beautiful ring-neck dove. That's Winter. She's an albino ring neck dove. So she's really special. She is one of our animal ambassadors. She goes out on Zoomobile programs and she is often taken out for some other on-site programs. So hopefully you get to meet her someday when you come to visit the zoo. So we're going to do a couple of crafts. One's very simple for a younger age group and one's a little more difficult if you want to invest a little more time. 
um, and skill. So for our first feeder, we are going to go outside and find a pine cone. I tied a little bit of twine around the top so we can eventually hang this from a tree. I cut some small pieces of yarn and what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to just tuck them into the pine cone because what we're hoping is that some of the birds that come to eat off of your pine cone will grab your yarn and they are going to use it in their nest. So maybe if you're lucky and this is one of the birds that's building a nest near your house, you can look outside and see your red yarn. So pick a bright color if you have some bright colored yarn so you can go and see if any of the birds in your neighborhood used your yarn because they will, they'll find anything to build their nest. So after we get all of our little pieces of yarn tucked in there, we are going to take a little bit of peanut butter. We're going to spread it onto the pine cone. This is going to be our glue that will not hurt the birds. The birds are going to love it. After we get some pine cone or after we get some peanut butter, and you're going to do that all over the pine cone. Then I have some just bird seed that I bought at the store and we're going to just gently push that in there. Okay. After you're done, it can go straight out onto the tree. You can pop it in the freezer for a little bit if you want it to set before you take it outside, but it will get out to um, whatever the outdoor temperature is pretty quick, but the birds are going to love it. Look at how beautiful it is. After they eat their seeds, they're going to find that yarn. So they're going to have a treat and you're going to help them build their nest. Now, if that's a little too simple for you, or if you have younger children and then you have a couple of older children, here is another feeder that I recycled a two liter bottle. You can use a one liter bottle. You can use a water bottle, whatever size. It doesn't, doesn't matter. You just make a bigger feeder or a smaller feeder. Cut that in half. I painted these. And then you can see on this top part, I cut sort of like a scalloped edge just to make it a little more decorative. So then after this is painted, you could cut your scalloped edge out. I cut out a circle here where the birds will actually go in to eat. On the lid, we drilled a hole and we tied a knot into the lid with some more twine so we can hang our feeder. Okay. And then what you would do is you would just, again, take some of your bird seed and you'd fill that up. There you go. Go hang it outside and then put it by a window where you can watch and see what backyard birds are coming to visit your house. So now we've made our bird feeders, but here are a couple other ideas on how you can play at home for your younger crew. Look at how cute this is. And I found this on Pinterest. So this was not an original idea. Haven't had an original idea for about 10 years since I discovered Pinterest. So this is so cute. We make these into little robins, little babies. I labeled them one side by color sorting and then the other side, one, two, three, four. So you could sit with your children and say, okay, now we have to put all the yellow and I cut up some pipe cleaners and the coordinating colors, little worms, and then you just slip them into their little mouth. And I'm telling you something about having that little small space and making it a game and they have to match, they will sit and they will do this. And that is so fun. Even older kids will think that they're too old for this, but trust me, they'll play. If you want to make it harder, you want to pretend like you're a, a baby bird, you can use a clothespin where they have to come and pick this up and see if then they can fit it into the bird's mouth. So that's one cute game. Over here, I brought an actual bird nest. We have so many biofacts here in the education department, and this was a bird's nest that we had saved. So you can see how busy those birds must be. They've built this up with some mud, lots of sticks, some hay, probably some coconut fibers. If you put out your like planters outside on your deck, I know the birds are always coming by and pulling the coconut out of my liners. I also wanted to share with you two birds that you will definitely see in your backyard if you're patient enough and you watch. Here's a blue jay. Listen to this call. Blue jays are 
kind of bossy. They'll give that call. I have a feeder at my house, and if I forget to fill it in the morning, I can hear the Blue Jay squawking. He's letting me know I'm not doing my job. And here's a woodpecker. So cool. So listen, if you hear that outside when you're on the walk, you just know there's a little woodpecker up there. It's pecking his nose, so he's shaking all those bugs to come out, and he can nibble them up. Now, my next game you can play with older kids. Take a picture. I used our Akron Zoo logo, any size, and then I just cut it up so that now it's a puzzle. And then what do birds lay? We know that birds lay eggs, and we certainly have a lot of eggs laying around this time of year. So I take my egg, and I'm going to tuck one piece of the puzzle in. There you go. And then I'm going to hide all these eggs in the room. Something about an egg hunt, something about it being a scavenger hunt. You could time them. Older children will eat that up, compete, tell them they have to race each other, see who can find all the eggs the fastest. If they can't build the puzzle, they know they're missing an egg. They have to go back and search. So again, so simple. You have all these things at home and you can still talk about what's going on out in nature, how birds lay eggs, and we can go and find these and just have a great time. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned something new about birds. We'll see you soon.